Hey, welcome to News You Can Use. I'm your host, BG. Today we have a story about a landlord from hell. No joke. Imagine moving halfway across the country for school, only to be told once you arrive that your landlord doesn't want you to live in their unit because of your tattoos. All right, before we go any further, I need you to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, and follow us across all of our social media. So this was not the warm welcome 18 year old Cadence Ball was looking for as she moved from Saskatchewan to Ontario to attend Western University in London. We actually have Cadence waiting in the wings to share her story. Cadence Ball, thanks so much for joining us here on News You Can Use. Hello. First off, I'm very sorry to hear what happened to you. I think a lot of people want to understand what were the events that took place? How did we get here? Um, so I got accepted to the University of Western Ontario in London. Um, and I was searching for a place to stay. I obviously wasn't going to move all the way from Saskatchewan to here without having a place to stay first. Um, so I had signed a lease with Esther Lee. Um, and I sent over the, a deposit to her and everything seemed okay. Um, about like an hour and a half after we left Saskatchewan, she actually texted and told me that I would need to find another place. So this is while you were moving your stuff, like leaving Saskatchewan to move to Ontario? Yeah, so it was already like a little on the rocky road with her, I guess. But um, we kind of, she just revised the lease and I re-signed it and she's like, okay, good enough for me. And I was like, hey. Like, we're going now. Like, we are driving all the way there. Like, you better be, like, okay with me moving in and everything. And she's like, yes, you signed the revised lease. It's fine. Like, I still have the deposit. This room is yours. And I was like, okay. We got there, like, a day or two early. So I just wanted to go and introduce myself to her and, you know, like, let her know who would be moving in. Um, just because we had never talked in person before. So I felt like it was kind of like a courtesy to her for me to do that. Mm -hmm. um but as soon as I was there she seemed a little hesitant and I was like don't worry like I'm not trying to move in like a day early or anything like I have a hotel booked until September 1st like don't worry about that kind of stuff like I'll be here on September 1st to move in I have everything with me that's fine and she's like yeah yeah just stay in the hotel and I was like yeah that's fine um and then on the way to the hotel from the place um, she called me and she just said, like, I don't want you living here anymore. What? Yeah, there was really, I tried to be like, well, what can I do? Like, what can I say? Is there anything? Do you need more money? Like, what do you need? And then she just like would not give an explanation, nothing. Just, I don't want you living here. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, when did it come to light that it was because of your tattoos? So I actually didn't find out the exact reason until um, a reporter covered this story and they called the landlord and she, she straight up told the reporter, like, um, you should have seen that girl. Like, she's 90% covered in tattoos. She's scary. So scary. And I was like, oh. So I guess the first thing I want to ask is, did you get your deposit back? Have you gotten your deposit back? Yeah, I did. Have you found a new place? Yes, I did. It it took like um it took like four days, but that's not like I don't know, when you say it takes four days to find a place to live, that sounds like oh I was only four days, but it was like four days of constant messaging, constant mm -hmm. interviews, constant applications and walkthroughs and everything. Like yeah. How much was your your lease, I guess, with this in, this initial landlord and how much are you paying now um so the lease with the initial landlord was 675 a month while i was in school and then yeah. free for the summer months so like yearly i'd be paying like pretty much nothing to live there because i'm only paying 675 for four out of 12 months or six out of 12 months or whatever um and then at this place and paying 600 a month like all year round so there is quite a big difference between those two okay now are have you looked in to see if there are any legal protections against this um so 
So it's kind of like a gray area. Obviously, a lease is a legally binding contract. So there is a legal agreement between the two of us. Um, I think the most action that I would be able to take to her would be um, small court claim or small claim court, which is just like the difference in rent between the place I'm at now and the place that she had for me, she would have to pay. And then all the hotels from the time that she like, I don't know, takes me to the curb, I guess. And then until I got the new place, she would also have to pay. Are you planning on taking Esther Lee to small claims court? Um, I've been looking into it, obviously, as like a first year university student with full time classes. It's stressful enough as it is, and then trying to do all of that on top of it. But I've been looking into it and seeing what I could do. And I don't know, I'll just go from there, I guess. Mm -hmm. Have you ever kind of felt like this type of discrimination before because of your tattoos? This was like the first time, like, I, back home, I had three jobs and one was, they were all in service. One was food service, one was like tire sales and service. And then the other one was pharmacy service. So like I could get decent jobs being like having tattoos on my body and there was no discrimination against me at any point in time up until then. How many tattoos do you have if you don't mind me asking? Like 10, but only three that are like medium to big size. Most of them are just like smaller that you can really not notice. Yeah. Any of them have any particular significant meaning? Um, a few of them do. Um, I have a couple tattoos that are in remembrance of my older brother who passed away four years ago now. So just mm -hmm. kind of like suicide awareness symbols and just things to do with that. My condolences to you, uh, Cadence. How are you feeling about all of this and what has transpired? Uh, like, I'm assuming it's probably been a lot for you. Yeah, so it was a lot for me, especially initially, like after that happened, you kind of, you're so far away from home and like, I'm 18, like I just moved out of my parents' house and then to be homeless, like, 30 hours away from anyone I know. It's very terrifying. I've been getting messages from like her neighbor um, and, yeah. and tenants that she currently has. Um, and um, the neighbor said like she exploits younger international students and she'll like get them to do things for her and she'll find like anything she can to add on to the rent to make them pay more. Um, and then the house that I was supposed to move into is a townhouse. And I think it's only supposed to be like three bedrooms, but she's like adjusted it so that it can be like five. Um, and Whoa. most of those rooms are not legal. Like they don't yeah. have a window as a fire escape. They don't have like a door. Like they don't have what they're supposed to have to legally be a room that you can rent out. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on with that tenant that lives there currently um, has been reaching out to me. He's like, I'm so glad you shared your story. He's like, because of you, I have the courage to like talk out about her and like, you know, get some kind of action against what she's been doing. So I'm almost glad that it ended the way it did because I don't have to go through that. I just had to go through the initial and now I'm good, but. Yeah, I feel sorry for anyone that has to deal with the bad parts of her. Uh, if there was something you could say to Esther, what would you want to say to her? Honestly, I just want to say, like, smart enough. Like, you're, you're in Canada. You are in 2021. Like, we thought any kind of discrimination behind you like that is not acceptable at this point i don't understand why you would think that is okay strong strong message cadence thank you so much for your courage i'm so happy to hear that you found a place to live i wish you the best i used to live in saskatchewan by the way uh, so <laughs> welcome to ontario i'm sorry that it started off on a sour note but i promise you it's going to end up on a positive one okay Perfect, thank you. And listen, 
Of course, we're going to continue following this story and see if Cadence decides to take legal action. But also remember this, if you do have any news stories you want us to look into, email us, news at brandingonashow.com because we drop news you can use every Tuesday and every Friday. Also, don't forget to watch the latest episode of The BG Show. And a reminder, a new episode comes out this Sunday. We'll talk soon. Bye.